Good evening. Uh, welcome. I'm Nick Bonner for TreeStuff.com. Uh, really excited about tonight's webinar. We've uh, kind of taken a step away from our normal uh, field-related stuff, and we're focusing on a business topic tonight, uh, employee benefits, how to maintain your staff. Uh, we've got a great guest, Megan Hargrave out of St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, Megan runs a 25-person strong uh, tree service out there, so definitely in that like mid-tier of, of kind of large tree services. Um, she's got a unique take on things, and uh, I'm, I'm really excited to see what she's going to talk about today and, and to share it with you guys. Uh, Jan January is a banner month for us. We're doing three webinars this month. Uh, we've got one of those up. Uh, we're doing the Culture of Safety with Travis Vickerson. That's in uh, a week or two. And then at the end of the month, this has not been announced yet, so you're hearing about it right now, we're actually going to fly the whole rig out to Washington, and we're going to tour the inside of Samson's rope factory uh, with a mix of live and pre-recorded footage, and because uh, it's really loud in there, so you wouldn't, the audio is kind of bad. Um, but we're going to uh, show you guys uh, how rope is made from the thread stage uh, all the way to the finished product at one of the world's uh, largest and oldest rope manufacturers, Samson. So uh, I think that's really exciting. Jake has uh, been putting his, the pedal to the metal, getting us new webinars set up. So we've got three this month. Um, Fallen Families Fund, uh, we started a charity last year. Uh, we're currently accepting applications for individuals that were hurt or uh, their family member was hurt or disabled doing tree work. Uh, we provide short-term cash infusions. Uh, one time, small amount uh, to help people get through some bills. Uh, we have an exciting announcement coming up about that in the next week or two, but there will be an opportunity if you donate through the website. Uh, up to $10,000 has been donated uh, by an anonymous person, so there will be some more details, um, but uh, we're gonna match donations. That person is gonna match donations. So if you were thinking about donating, don't do it right now because we haven't announced it officially, um, but do it in a, in a week. Uh, and you, you should have heard about that. So um, I think that's it. We have a CEU quiz at the end. The link will be posted in the comments uh, following this video and in a new post on the Facebook page. We've tested it. We're sure it works. If it doesn't work, uh, refresh your uh, browser or something and try it again. So uh, you will get your CEUs. There's two available tonight uh, for a couple different departments within the, uh, the ISA nomenclature there. And uh, you guys should be all set. So without any further ado, uh, I'll hand it over to Megan, and uh, we'll let her take it away. Sounds good. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity to be here and um, to get to talk today. Um, we are talking about a very exciting topic of employee benefits, which is important um, for, for lots of reasons. It's important for employee retention. Um, it's important for, um, you know, trying to attract new employees. So there, there's lots of reasons that, that we're talking about this, but this is kind of what, where we're gonna go with the, the conversation. Um, we're gonna give you a little background on me um, I, and just kind of the state of the industry, um, what's going on, why, why this is an important topic right now. Um, we'll talk about some of the boring but important definitions that go along with, with benefits, employee benefits, and, and just for people who may or may not have understanding of what goes on with workers' comp, with health insurance, with, with different types of benefits that could be offered. Um, we'll talk a little bit about industry statistics, and I'll give you some, some information about um, who's offering what, um, what, what types of benefits are offered, and we'll look at some outside of the tree care industry uh, benefits for, for to give me, maybe give you some ideas or give you um, something unique that you can do in your own company or um, that you could ask for in your company um, to to kind of uh, attract and ret retain employees and then we'll kind of finish it up and if throughout the conversation if you have anything specific that you'd like to talk about or you'd like me to address um, just shoot us a shoot us a message and we will we'll do our best to to answer that so um, Let's see. So who am I? I, I? As Nick said, that I own Metropolitan Forestry Services in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I've been in the tree care industry for about 12 years, um, working in, in the office and doing various, various things in our office. I am a ISA certified arborist and a CTSP, and uh, I have a undergraduate in health services administration and a master's in international business. 
the, our company, Metropolitan Forestry, as Nick said, he's about, we're about a 25 person. We hover right about 25 people. Um, we'd like to have more. But we're a family owned and operated tree care company. We do everything from plant health care to landscaping, tree care. Um, we, we like to take care of trees. Um, and if necessary, we, we'll remove them. Um, so why this conversation right now? Uh, Jake and I at the TCIA Expo in Charlotte, we started this conversation. I stopped by the Tree Stuff booth and we started talking about the trouble with finding employees, retaining employees, um, and, and what kind of challenges we were having. And, and they were similar challenges that, that quite a few people were also having. So we, we, we got talking about that a little bit and he asked me if I wanted to talk to, some more about it. And so that's how this got started. Um, I will say I am not a expert in anything having to do with benefits or, or an expert in any of this. It's just a specific challenge that we face as, as a company and I think several other companies from, from cohorts that I've talked to are, are also having the same problem. So we wanted to kind of give some people some, some education, some, some pointers on what they could possibly do to help attract, retain employees. And just kind of switch things up, maybe a new ideas for rewarding employees. Um, and just basically start the conversation. So talking about challenges in our industry and what, what a lot of the things that I've heard that have um, maybe kind of started th this problem um, or that have led to the current situation. There is a low unemployment rate, which it can be a good thing. Um, it, it, it oftentimes is. Who knows? Um, I'm not an expert in that by any means. But if you know, if there, there's more jobs out there than there are than there are people to fill them right now. So, so what that means is is people can, there, there's not necessarily a need for people to, to leave their employment, but they have lots of options if they want to leave. Um, they, could, they could go on to another company, so that's why it's really important for companies to be providing the best for their employees and working hard to retain those employees that they've worked hard to get. Um, another big problem is the decreasing interest in the trades, so skilled trades like plumbing and in our industry, tree care, tree climbing, um, electricians. People are sending their kids to college because that's what everybody does. And, you know, for whatever reason, to try to keep up with the Joneses or because, because that's what you want to do, some, some people may or may not need to go to college. Maybe they're not college material, but they're going to college regardless, trying to get a four-year degree or a two-year degree. So they're coming out of college with a lot of student loan debt. And, you know, it, it's going to be hard to hire a entry-level person in, the, in, in our industry or in any industry that is coming out of college with, tw I think they say the average is about 25,000 in student loans, but are going up from there. Um, so so that, that's hard to, to hire somebody at a baseline. How are they gonna be able to live off of a, an hourly wage of a, say a groundsman, 12 to $15 an hour starting out? Maybe they don't have, maybe they have a little experience, maybe not. But with all that student loan debt, how are they going to make that work? How are they going to make ends meet and support their family? One of our issues is also we have an aging workforce. Um, tree care is, is, is hard on your body. It's hard on, it's hard on your equipment. But you know, when you get to a certain age, if you haven't taken care of yourself at a, at a younger age, maybe, maybe once you get up into the upper 40s, low 50s, it's, it's, it becomes hard on your body to, to climb and, and continue to do this hard, hard manual labor on a regular basis. So we've seen a lot of our more experienced crew leaders aging out or um, deciding that they were going to do something a little less strenuous throughout, um, you know, for, for their employment. Uh, another issue is the millennials. Everybody likes to talk about the, the challenges with hiring millennials, attracting millennials, and then retaining millennials. That's, that's, that's a whole kind of conversation that we'll talk, I'll talk more about later, how to maybe attract some of those people. 
Another one is contract worker, workers. It's, it's, it's not necessarily a challenge, but it provides a whole new, uh, just a whole new look at what we have to do as far as business owners and how we have to approach how we, how we attract people and, and then maybe how we, we, we keep them on, especially if contract workers are coming in and moving through or you know, moving on, staying only for short periods of time. How do you attract them? How do you uh, use them to the, to the best of their ability while they're, while they're in town? Another problem I think that has been in this industry is, and is always going to be part of this industry is, is job hopping. You know, maybe starting out at one company, then another company offers you, you know, more money or a better benefit. So you hop, hop over that company. Um, then the work slows down, so you hop over to another company. It's just, it's a difficult, it's a difficult challenge to maneuver through. So we're going to give some ideas about how to, how to deal with that. Maybe talk a little bit about the repercussions for employees who are doing that. Um, then another another challenge is that goes along with that is is paying cash under the table to employees and and how uh, employees that are compensated uh, that are paid a uh, daily rate cash or employers who are paying cash to employees what the what the repercussions are for that and and kind of what kind of what you have to be be thinking about when when you're in that type of situation so that's kind of what we're going to be talking about a little bit the first thing kind of we'll go we'll talk about the backwards from there and we'll talk about paying employees under the table and what type of tax implications that you that you as the employer need to think about and also the employee needs to think about from that perspective so you know if if you're making a daily rate or a, a, a company is paying you a daily rate or paying you in cash more than likely, if you're not on payroll, that means that you are not getting your FICA taxes or your federal income taxes taken out. So the federal government requires employers and employees to declare those taxes that they pay and that they pay out. So someone's going to be keeping track of that, whether it's the employer. The employer, if they have a business, they're going to have to report that the employee is going to have to report that to, to the IRS, to the federal government, that they received that money. Um, so if, if you're being paid cash under the table, that's, the employer is, is that's going to be, affect some, both of you in some way. The, um, the employment taxes, un unemployment taxes are also one of the things that have to be paid and, and also workers' compensation. So if, if you're being paid under the ca cash under the table, that means that your employer is not paying the workers' compensation and they're not paying unemployment taxes. So if you get laid off, you may not be able to go back and claim unemployment. Um, if, if you get hurt on the job when you're working and that company does not have workers' compensation, then you have no recourse as far as uh, having your injuries paid for or having um, you know, any time loss paid for. So that's a big thing to think about when you're considering taking that money under the table. Um, the, another, another part of that is which is a, is a is a is an interesting topic, but you you kind of have to delve into it with your tax professionals. But um, making sure that you're correctly reporting any type of income that you're making, so any type of cash income, any type of income you receive from your employer is considered a reportable wage. So you need to report that. Um, there was even a place where I read that any type of gift cards or any type of compensation you. Re you receive from your employer, it, it should be declared to the IRS, something to be aware of and, and know about. Um, the other thing is the eligibility to work, that I-9 that you fill out or the E-Verify that you do online. That's a system put in place so that there's a checks and balance. So if, if, you, if an employer is telling you that, is telling the government that they've hired you and you know, and, and that you're working for them, 
then they, they, they cross-check that to make sure that you're paying your taxes and the employee is also paying, the ta paying taxes on that money that you're paying them. So it's just something to be aware of if, if you're being paid cash under the table. Um, also, in terms of benefits, if you're paying, if your employer is not paying FICA taxes, you're not contributing to your Social Security. So if on down the line you're worried about retirement or that Social Security benefit, you, you, anything that you're receiving ca in cash payments under the table won't be, you won't be eligible for, for those, it won't be recorded as Social Security benefits. Uh, same thing for unemployment benefits and workers' compensation. A lot of times that's how people get, get found out is for paying cash under the table. You, you, you lay an employee off or they lose their job and then they go file for unemployment benefits and then the, the company says, or the government says, well, you weren't, you weren't listed as working, so we, we don't have any benefits to pay to you. So something to think about, it's, it's a problem for both the employer and the employee. So something you need to be aware of and, and kind of ask those questions. If you're being paid a, a daily rate, or if you're not getting a pay stub, or if you're not seeing taxes being taken out of your, your pay, that's something that you should, you should maybe ask that question. Sure. Um, if so, you're saying that if they um, what to do if your employee d wants to be paid cash? Yeah. So they, if they say they're going to quit, they don't pay them cash. Ooh. Well. Okay. So someone asked if what do you do if your employees only want to be paid cash, or they threaten to quit if they're not paid cash or if a crew wants to leave if they're not paid cash. Um, I, I would say don't get yourself in that situation in the beginning in, in the first place uh, because paying people cash is, is, is a slippery slope. So if you pay, you know, we don't pay anybody cash. So you've got to, um, the, the other way to get, I guess, to get away around that is if somebody wants cash, um, right now they have the, the contract workers and the gig economy that's going on right now. You can pay people cash, but you have to declare that, you have to keep track of that, and you have, to, anybody you pay more than $600, you have to put a 1099. You have to give them a 1099, they have to receive a 1099, and, and you have to declare that. So then you have to pay taxes on that. So if, if your employer says they paid you $20,000, you're going to get that 1099, um, and, and then they're going to they're gonna report that. You're going to get a 1099 that says that you got that, that $20,000, and the federal government is going to charge you, charge you taxes on that. So it's, we'll talk a little bit more about that as well, but it's something to definitely be aware of is um, you're, you're, you're going to be found out eventually. This is someone, I, I worked in the service industry for uh, quite a few years, bartending and serving, and when your employer doesn't, doesn't report taxes correctly or you don't report taxes correctly, they come back. I, I remember I being out of the industry for a while, and a place that I uh, that I worked got got charged with back taxes because they weren't correctly reporting uh, cash tips, and I got hit with a huge bill from the IRS that I was barely able to pay myself. So it comes back at the at the most inopportune time, and where they're going to come, they're going to come after you for that money and they, they will find out eventually. So um, I, would say, I would say don't get into that position or let them know that any, any income that you're paying them in cash is going to be reported on a 1099 and then stick with paying people through a payroll system, make sure that the correct taxes are being taken out. Right now there's all kinds of systems to do that, so, um, and they make it really easy. So I would not get in that, in that situation if, if, you can't po if you can possibly say we, we get paid um, you know, through, through a payroll system, you get taxes taken out, you get a check every week or two weeks, whatever it is, and, and stick with that and don't even get yourself into the situation where you're paying cash to anyone. So, and, you know, that would be my that would be my suggestion. 
the next part that kind of goes along with that is the, the job hopping. You know, if, if you're working for an employer that's offering you benefits or paying you hourly, and you know, somebody down XYZ Tree Service down the street offers you, you know, an extra dollar an hour, you really got to do the math on that and, and calculate what the benefits that you're getting at each one of those companies and find out what, what, what is most important to you. If you have a, a family of, or small kids, it's really important to have health insurance because you never know what could happen. Um, you know, and, and so that benefit is, is almost, it, it's, 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 it's incalculable of, of incalculable of what you should, um, you know, of, of what you need. So it's a really important benefit. Um, you know, a, an extra dollar an hour comes out to, I'm sure everybody can do that math, but $2,080 a year for an extra, you know, dollar, dollar raise. So, you know, you, you really have to calculate that what's important to you, what's important to your family, and, and calculate out all the benefits that you receive at each company. There's, um, this is kind of, kind of gives you a baseline. It's going to be different for any, anywhere you work, any benefits that your company offers. But a health insurance plan that is, is offered by your employer could be as much as, as a benefit of $5,000 to $30,000 a year, depending on if you have your family on there if you, if, and, and what type of contributions that they, they make to you. So that, that's how much that could be worth. A health savings account, if, if your employer has something like that, could be, um, sorry, that should be $500 to $1,500, plus there's, there's current and future tax savings for using a, a health savings account. So that, that's a big benefit. A retirement plan would be, could be 2 to 6% of your, your salary. So if your employer offers a retirement plan, even if you're a young person, that money goes with you. You can take that with you to other companies, but that is, they, they like to call it free money. But if your employer makes a contribution to your retirement plan, you're, you're contributing 3% of your salary, they're contributing 3% of your salary, that, that's a huge benefit that you can take with you if you ever go to another company. And that's something that you set aside for your retirement for when you are not gonna work any longer. You really wanna make sure that you keep that in your retirement, retirement plan and don't touch it and don't take it out because there's tax implications for when you, when you take that out. You should pretend like that money is in that, in that retirement plan and it doesn't exist and it, it's never going to exist. Don't, don't take it out. There's bad tax. You get taxed really bad if you do that. But dental insurance, depending on what, what the plan is, what they offer, it could be as from $1,500 to $4,500 in, in extra benefit per year. Disability insurance, like the Aflex that are really popular right now, is, is, a, is a huge benefit um, for, for people if you, if you need that, especially in our industry, if, if you get hurt or, um, it, it, you know, it, everybody has seen those commercials. It's, it's something uh, above and beyond that, that people, you know, could help you if you have to take time off. Life insurance is, is not a huge, huge deal, but, but it, it could be, and that's $250 to $500 a month. It's relatively inexpensive, so um, that's, that's something to think about. But then what we were talking about before, the employer contributions to, to FICA, that's 7.65% of your salary per year is what, is what your employer contributes to your Social Security um, benefits. Unemployment insurance is anywhere from 0.3% to 1.5% of your salary, and that's a benefit that hopefully you wouldn't have to use, but it's there if you, if you get laid off, if, you're, if, if you don't have a job. You'd want to have that, and, and that's, a, that's a benefit of, of having an employer that is, that is following the, the rule of law and is doing what they're supposed to be doing. And that's kind of what the, the, the benefits of working for a, a good company is, is you don't think about these things like workers' compensation and um, general liability insurance and correct reporting of taxes as a benefit, but it is, and it, and it, it means you're working for a, a, a good company, and it means that they're, they're reporting 
maybe not always, but they're reporting and, and following, following the law and that you're going to be protected. If they have a workers' compensation policy, general liability policy, and they're correctly reporting your tax, their taxes and yours, you know, you, you, can, you can rest easy because you're working, you're working for a good company. So a little bit more about kind of what we were talking about before with the, the, the taxes and correct reporting. Um, the, the FICA, just for anybody who doesn't understand what this is, and this is really interesting stuff again, so sorry that it's, um, it's so exciting. The, the, the FICA taxes are, it's the Federal Insurance Contributions Act, which is a law that is, it it's, it's requires employers to take out the Social Security and Medicare taxes. And, you know, you can, when you go to an employer and you fill out your, your W-4, your, your federal income tax forms, and your, your state income tax forms, you can choose deductions on there. You can, you can decide how much money, how much federal income tax you want to have taken out of there, out of your, out of your, your paycheck. You cannot choose to, t to not take out Social Security and Medicare. You have to take those out regardless of, of, of anything. So if you, have, if you have a lot of deductions, you know, your tax, your tax implications may be a little bit lower. Um, and if you're not correctly reporting those, they're going to let you know at the end of the year when you file your returns. The Social Security and the Medicare are not, n not negotiable. You have to do that on a re on the, that, that is a set amount, and you, you have to take those out of, your, out of your payroll. The Social Security is, you know, that's what your, your benefit for when you, when you are not working anymore. That's that money that is set aside by the government for retirement, disability, and survivor benef survivorship benefits. And that's, you're paying into that pot, that big government pot in the sky of Social Security, and, and they re require you to pay, pay, that, pay into that so that you have that benefit when you decide it's time to retire. Again, on that, with a form, with the, the taxes that you have to pay in the form for the 1099 for an independent contractor, which is what we were talking about, if somebody wants to be paid with cash, you need to make sure that you have their social security number and their address information so that you can fill out the 1099 for them. If you pay anyone over $600, you, for, for as, in terms of an employee or an independent contractor uh, or anyone who's self-employed, you, they will receive that form, you fill that out, make sure that your accountants or tax people or whoever fills that out so that they get that form in the mail that shows that they received that income and then they will have to pay taxes on that. So that's one way that you can get, get away with, with, with not paying, with paying people cash and making sure that you're covered and then they have to pay taxes on that later. So that's an important thing to establish as far as the, in the contract economy that we're, we're in contract worker economy right now. Another benefit that doesn't seem like a benefit is, is the general, for, especially for employers, is that general liability insurance policy or um, you know, having some kind of commercial general liability. That is the insurance policy that is going to protect a lot of things. It's gonna protect you as the employer, your equipment, but it's, it's, it's coverage for anything that would happen on the job. So say um, to a piece of property or, or you know, a customer property or your trucks or whatever. If you know a limb falls through a roof, if a truck damages a driveway, the general liability policy is going to cover. Hopefully, is going to cover those. You you have certain limits, but but that's where that's going to come into play. So if you know if if 
no one wants to think about things like that, but if somebody, you know, somebody gets hurt at a customer's property or if, you know, if and you don't have a general liability policy or if a, you know, you could get into some serious, serious trouble um, if you drop a log on a house or damage a car or something in the, in the scope of you working on someone's property and you do not have a, a general liability policy, you, you know, you can, that can, that can cause you some serious trouble. Uh, the umbrella coverage is, is just above and beyond that. So you may choose to, everybody hears that you have to have a certain, um, a certain limit for like up to $1 million for, to be in certain, uh, to be involved in certain, like our St. Louis Arborist Association, you have to be, in, to be involved in the St. Louis Arborist Association, you have to have at least a million dollars in general liability coverage. So if you don't have that, or if you need, you feel, feel that you need more than that, you would go for the umbrella coverage that that would extend your liability coverage above and beyond that for just, might be a good idea for in, in a business such as ours where there's 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 the potential risk for for damage for equipment damage for um, property damage so it's just that extra layer of protection for your for you as the employer and when we talked about insurance limits that is the the maximum amount of insurance that a company will pay you for for a covered loss so if you know everybody hears those new commercials that are out all state or I think it's all state, but you know, you you wreck your brand new car, and your but your car is only worth you know half of what it what it's what you paid for it. That's the insurance limit, and that's kind of kind of a sticky situation you have to discuss with your broker. But but that's you know if if you go out buy a brand new piece of equipment and something happens to it, that that insurance limit is going to be what they're going to pay you if something happens to that. So you want to make sure that you're covered on all that and um, and that you have the correct limits for the equipment that you have and and make sure that you're covered in terms of what you're doing in terms of business. So um, a lot of a lot of that general liability. Um, you know, making sure that you have the correct, if you're spraying pesticides, if you're, you are, you know, depending on what type of tree work you're doing, landscaping, that you have the right coverage for what you do in your business. So you want to make sure that that's, that's all correct too. Yes. Megan, there have been a couple of questions. Um, they, uh, they can hear me talking now, sure. so you don't have to restate. But there have been a couple of questions about uh, what companies you use to get health benefits for your people, um, or, or if there's any specific uh, like benefits platforms that you use currently. So I would suggest for small companies is you reach out to a, insurance brokers is what we use. Um, they. They, they don't charge us anything on the front end, um, generally, and, and they shop out insurance, health insurance, the health insurance plans for us on a regular basis. The same thing is with the general liability and workers' compensation. Um, we have an insurance broker who shops that out every year. He brings us the different, lim the different types of, and any, any person who's doing insurance, I'm sure um, there's, there's if you t if you look up insurance broker or um, you know look into any ours is Missouri General who we use for that and they actually help me with a lot of the stuff that we put together in here but um, our, my brokers if you have questions about our health insurance broker if you have questions about health insurance you, they're they're always there to answer those questions and 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 they help with the the yearly maneuvering and manipulating through the health insurance system. So if your employers have, employees have questions, they can, they can go and go talk to the, your, your health insurance broker and they can answer questions. They can help you fill out forms. They really provide, provide that type of type of service, seeing what, what type of employees you have and what would be the best coverage. So that would be, that would be my suggestion is to find a, find a broker, find somebody who can, who can help you 
you know, look at all that stuff because it's really complex and there's a lot of things to do every year. You, you know, we get lots of calls from people wanting to sell us insurance or wanting to offer us insurance and the brokers can sift through all those people and they can, they can look at the plans that they're offering and, and tell you which is the best plan and where you should renew at. So we use, our, we use Anthem, Blue Cross Blue Shield as our health insurance. We have uh, Delta Dental and, and every year we have the potential if we wanted to, we could switch that out um, if, there's, if we can get a better rate from another company. So they will shop for us, those brokers will shop the rates and, and then bring back to us, here's who we think that you should go with, here's who, you know, here's who's offering the best plan for your business and for your employees. Because your employee mix is gonna take into consideration what type of health insurance you need. If you have a bunch of young, you know, young guys that don't have a lot, don't have families or that don't have young kids, that's gonna be one, one section. If you have a bunch of, you know, maybe aging, you know, over 35, years of age, those people are going to need different benefits, as well as if you have a heavier, heavier female versus male mix of employees, that's going to mean a lot, of, a, a lot different for the, for the coverage that you're going to need and what's going to be the best op option for your employees. So it's definitely something that I, 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 I go to our brokers often and I, I call them up like for something like this. I'm putting together this PowerPoint. Can you send me some information that you think would be Im important to include or what should I, what should I include? Um, same thing with workers' compensation. That's a, there's a lot of different providers out there and there's a lot of different people who provide that but you have to find the best fit for your company and what you do and then you know and and, and it's a lot of it's a lot of a lot of extra work so that that broker is 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 key so and i'm not sure what the cost is on that but i could probably find out and and follow up i'm sure they either get kickbacks from the insurance company or they're 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 they are reimbursed somehow i'm sure i know we don't pay them anything but they i'm sure they make their money somehow so um it is insurance so <laughs> but on talking to the workers compensation you know, the, 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 ins the workers' compensation policies, it's a benefit for the employer and it's a benefit for the employee. The, the employer is being, is being um, protected from lawsuits that may come from an injury. If you don't have workers' compensation insurance and somebody gets hurt, uh, you, could, you could be on, on the, you know, on the hook for legal, all kinds of things, but, but it could open up to lawsuits. There could potentially be a, be a, lot, of, a lot of different things that happen. Uh, the workers' compensation it kind of insulates you from that, although it doesn't protect you completely, but they, they kind of take care of that. Uh, as, as from the employer, employee perspective, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a benefit because if something happens to you in the course of working, you're gonna get your medical expenses covered and, and taken care of, and then you could have your, the lost time that, that you miss, where you miss work, that will be covered as well. So that's, that's an important, important benefit, especially in the, the work that we do, because it is, it is dangerous and those accidents do happen. So that's an important, important thing to, to think about and make sure that you're, you're a question for employees to ask if, if they have a workers' compensation policy. The, the, one of the difficult things about the workers' compensation policy is how they determine your rates and how, they, how, they, how, how you figure out how much you have to pay. And that's where this experience modification rating comes in. So every, every company has a, has a rating and you want to be as close to one or under one as possible because that means you are a safe, you actually want to be under one. But if you're over one or way over one, that means you've maybe had some accidents and, and you, you, you will probably be paying higher workers' compensation rates than, than a company that doesn't have any accidents. So your experience modification rate rating, you want it to be you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, something like that. And, 
and you want to have no accidents either, obviously. If your experience modification rating is above, is one or above, you, you it's going to be that way for a while and you're going to pay higher rates. So um, that's how they gauge how safe of a company you are. That's basically your, your safety number. So, you know, below one, that's good. One or above, it's, it's not that it's bad, but it's that you have, you have had some accidents and you're going to pay more for, for your workers' comp policy. So um, that's just something to be aware of. So we will... Another, like we talked about, kind of the health insurance marketplace is 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 difficult to maneuver. It's it's massive. It's confusing. I get confused with it. Um, the, our employees are constantly confused as far as, well, what's a premium? What's a deductible? What, why is this copay? What's an HRA? What's 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 an HSA? There's all these different acronyms, and it and it is difficult difficult to maneuver. So that's why I really do suggest having a broker to help you out with, with those types of, of situations or at least establishing the initial, what, what your company needs for healthcare insurance. So premium, the premium is the, is the total amount that you, that you are, are charged for coverage from an insurance company. So this is the total monthly cost that you're, either your employer will pay or you will pay a portion of. The deductible is the, is, is the amount that you have to pay first before your insurance kicks in. So some people, um, that's, that's always a different rate. That's how, that's how they change how, what, what your benefit is for, for between health insurance plans. You, you may have six different plans and they all look the same, but the deductibles are different, the co-pays are different, and that's where you really have to dig in and take a look and figure out what, compare apples to apples. Because if you're considering moving to a company and both changing jobs, moving to a company for, for a small amount of money, dollar, two dollars, three dollars more an hour, and one company has health insurance, or say they both have health insurance, and one person's deductible is $2,000, one company's deductible is $2,000, the other company's is $7,000. I mean, that's, that's a lot, a big difference, and you've just, you've just covered the, that, that lower deductible company is, is, is way better to work for because if something happens to you or your family, you're going to have to pay way more in health insurance before, before your insurance even kicks in for that deductible. Same thing with copay. So a copay is what you pay when you go to the doctor's office. I'm sure everybody knows what that is, but that, that can vary based on plan. So one employer may have a, um, an, a, a, program that has a $10 copay for prescriptions. Another, another plan may have a $50 copay for prescriptions. If you have a lot of medical needs prescriptions, that, that could be a, be a very costly affair to have, have a higher copay. If, you, if your copay to the doctor is $25 on one plan and you, you, know, you go to another company and they have a higher copay, again, that, that, that can add up really quickly if you have small children or if you, you, know, if you have a, a birth or um, you know, have to have, you have a baby in a hospital is really expensive. So having that higher, um, the higher deductible or a higher copay could really hurt you in the long run. So it's one of those things that you don't see on a, on a regular basis. It doesn't show up on your paycheck every day, but it's, it's there and it, can, it is a, a definite benefit or a detriment to depending on which, which company you're working for and what the, your company offers. So that's a really good question to ask when you're, um, when you're, when you're looking at different employers. Oops, I'll go back there. Retirement plans. These are also there's there's several several options for for this. And again, uh, we we go through a a specific a broker for a, a retirement company. That all the uh, the big names of these Edward Jones and um, Raymond James and um, American Funds and all the, all these other all these companies that do 
retirement plans are going to have somebody that you can talk to that will be your point person if you want to elect to have a retirement plan in your in your company they will get the paperwork going they will they will come out and talk to the employees about it they will give you updates they'll they'll make sure that everything is 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 done on 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 your end and that it's it's really fairly easy to implement but the retire depending on what it is the retirement plan is 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 a financial arrangement that's designed to replace your income when you stop working so it really is i can't stress this enough that you want to if you have a retirement plan when you or when you start a retirement plan you want to not ever tap into that ever. You want to pretend like that money is, is, is put away forever and you can never touch it because they tax it really badly if you, put, if you take out money before, before retirement age. So every, every pay period, you're gonna have money taken out of your, your paycheck, pre-tax or post-tax, depending on what, what situation you have. And, and they'll be put into your 401k or IRA or whatever, you, whatever situation you, you come up with. And that money will just will, will sit in there and accrue interest or you know, go on the stock market, wh whatever, whatever you decide to do, whatever your company has available. But that money will grow and sit there and, and it will be available to you in, in retirement age. And if you decide to take it out early, it has major tax implications. So it will doubly tax you because you, it comes out pre-tax. So that's, a, well, depending on what, if, if that's the, the plan that your employer chooses. But that's a, that's a really great benefit for things to come out pre-tax because your taxes are less. So that's with the 401k, you can, your employer can have a pre-tax or a post-tax and you can, and, and depending on what that is, that's a, that is a great benefit. And if they match those, then that is what we, what we were talking about earlier is free money. So if your employer matches up to a certain percent, that is basically, they're, they're matching every contribution that you make. So, and it, it's basically just a 3% of your, sal your yearly salary or your paycheck or whatever that happens to be. So it, it can be a really great benefit for you. And, and companies that offer that, are, that's, that's a great benefit. A Roth IRA is, is an individual retirement plan. And we get those questions a lot about what's a Roth IRA because people talk about those a lot. But those are, you, you, put, those, you put those contributions into a, a retirement, a Roth retirement plan, um, and that's after tax. But then when you can, but they are, the earnings on the account and the withdrawals, you can take them out after age 59 and a half, and those are tax-free. So that's a, that's a really great benefit too, if, if you can, if your employer offers, or if you can have one of those. Great way to, to set up um, a retirement, retirement plan. For those who offer, in some companies, profit sharing, that is another way is another benefit so uh, that's a a system in which you know you, you directly receive benefits in terms of how well the company does so i know some of the bigger companies i know davy does this uh, but there's there's quite a few other companies that do that and it is a great benefit and people really like that so uh, it's it's there's a lot more than just you you know you get a benefit from if they make a profit but there's tiers and structures and i think you have to work there for a specific amount of time but yeah is there a question sure hey megan carson from tree stuff here we have a question from john zanders who i think is local here to indy hey john hey. Um, what does the average employee value the most about the company that they work for um, I think that's one of my last slides, but, um, but it kind of talks about, um, that really varies from regionally. It varies depending on everyone that you talk to. And I get, got a lot of different answers on that. It really dep depends on age it depends on what's important to you if you have kids a lot of people are and millennials versus non-millennials that's that's a big difference as well so it 
I would say it's, it's very based on what situation you're in. I think health insurance right now is, is, is a huge benefit. And I'll pull up some of the, some of the stats later on of, of what, what people offer in the tree care industry and what, 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 does, what, what more people offer. But I think health insurance is a huge one. I think continuing education or tuition reimbursement is going to be a big one for people who are trying to pay back their student loans, especially for young people. For people who are maybe in the above 30 crowd, I think a retirement plan or a, or a contributions to a, a 401k are going to be probably some of the, the big, more important to those, those type of folks. But once again, it's going to kind of depend on where you are and, and what's important to you. But we'll, we'll look a, bit, a little bit about those in a little bit too. Here's just the kind of the benefits of a great company working for a company, the benefits for employers. It's, it's a great thing to have benefits because it makes you look more competitive to people who are looking for a job. Obviously, that's, that's what the name of the game is right now, is, is especially in this economy where there are more jobs than there are people. I can go work for another company. Are they going to offer me as much as you are? Are they going to offer me more? So benefits make you competitive. They make you, they make you look better than other companies. They make you, you know, but, you know, like it's, there, there's all different ways to look at it. Uh, low, it lowers employee turnover. So, you know, if you offer benefits, if you have happy employees, if they're they're happy with the the benefits that they're offered, they're going to stay with you longer, in theory and hopefully. There's tax advantages to to having benefits. So things like the 401k. There's you know if you do pre-tax, there's there's benefits. If you do the the pre-tax health insurance plans, there are benefits of that. There's all kinds of tax advantages to having having those, and a lot of them, um, you know, your accountant or brokers could could speak more to to what would be the best situation for you. But something like health insurance is going to give you healthier employees. When they have health insurance and their families are healthy and they can go to the doctor, they're they're going to be healthier. They're going to be at work more often. If they can go get their flu vaccines, if they can, um, you know, if they can get their go to the dentist on a regular basis, if they can go get their their well women checks or their physicals on a regular basis, you're going to have healthier employees. That was misspelled, but it, you can get, um, you know, you'll have healthier employees, and and they'll be better employees. They'll show up to work. They won't be sick. It'll just be a better better situation. It's also advantages for families. So if you can take take advantage of, if you have a group insurance policy, it lowers the rates, and and they can, you know, and as an employer, your family can take take advantage of that as well. So you can have your family on the plan as well and that's you know the more people on it the better the rates that you get and etc et like that so um, they're also easy to implement so it, it, with the help of a broker you really can maneuver these they're, they're not terribly terribly difficult and and the brokers really do help help a lot with maneuvering this through the systems so here's where we're kind of to answer that question um, the the Tree Care Industry Association, TCIA, if you're familiar with them, they, every year they do a wage and benefit survey and they send these out to member companies and they ask you to fill out a survey based on what you pay and the benefits that you offer. And if you fill this survey out, you get a free copy of the, the results, which they poll all the companies throughout the country. And, and then they divide all of the results as on a whole from everyone who who took the survey and then they divide it into geographic areas so the west coast the great plains south southeast i think midwest midwest doesn't exist anymore but um they have i think those are all in the great plains now and then they have but but it divides it into geographic geographic regions and then they give you the the data based on the region so you can see what type of benefits what type of companies reported 
the information and then you can see what type of companies in your area, what they're offering and also what they're paying, which is a question that people were asking as well, is, is what, what, what people are paying for as, as a wage. It gives you a general um, mean mean average and median average of what people are paying, but it's a, it's a great way to gauge if you are paying in the right ballpark. Are you paying too little? Are you paying too much? And and it also keeps that data from year to year, so you can see if the if wages are going up, if in certain positions, or if they're going down. So you know, as another benefit to employers, being part of these tree care. Um, associations, whether it's the TCIA or whether it's ISA or whether, you know, these, these things are just benefits. I'm not, I don't make any money from them or get any, get any kickbacks, but the, um, the benefits that they get are really helpful to employers and, and especially maneuvering through, through some of the systems and the trainings and, and how you should implement some of these systems are, are, are really beneficial. But so this is where this slide, where I, where I got this information from and um, for the quiz after pay attention to, you know, some of the bolded ones. So um, the, the benefits that are most offered by companies in, in the tree care industry, and this is to hourly employees, I didn't include salaried employees on this one, but this is for hourly employees. This, this list goes in line from most, most frequently offered to, to least frequently offered. So paid vacation and paid holidays are the two most frequently offered. And I think there's like close to 75 or 77% of the companies that were surveyed offer those benefits. Continuing education, clothing boot allowances, annual bonuses, paid sick leave, 401ks, family health insurance, then cell phones, dental insurance, employee-only insurance, company vehicles, life insurance, profit sharing, and fuel allowance. Those last three are the least offered. I think there was less than 10% on, on those most companies. I would think um, the profit sharing and the fuel allowance or the company vehicles would probably be something that was offered more, re more readily to a, a salaried employee. That would be one of those that was that, that would be more more likely for one of those. This is again for hourly employees. So you can see, I mean, these are the kind of the general general types of benefits that are offered in in our industry. So and and there's a lot of, of very variation in there. Cell phones, I think, is a great benefit. Um, but but the sick leave, the paid vacation and holidays is a big one. Um, and then again, the continuing education and training, training maybe reimbursement is, is a big, big piece as well. So that's always interesting to see. So then I just started looking at some, some alternative industries and kind of getting some ideas for what employers maybe to, to switch it up or to do something a little bit different where they could start looking for, for other options as alternative benefits and, and how often those are. The, these are not very, very often offered benefits. So it, it <laughs> there's several of them that are, um, that are, but, but they're, but, but in this current climate, people are getting really creative with their benefits. So it's, um, it's, it's definitely something to, to consider and to kind of look at what your employees do and what, what they're interested in and maybe kind of tweak what, what you can do to, to give them that extra benefit of, of working for you. So something like vision insurance, disability insurance, massage therapy, fitness classes, gym memberships, food, um, the paid time off for volunteering is a big millennial one, um, child care, employee assistance programs, wellness stipends, student loan reimbursement, pet friendly offices, flexible work hours is another big millennial one, which just does not work in our industry. So I, you know, tree care is seasonal and it's, you know, it's busy. So flexible is not really always the, the easiest thing to achieve in this industry. And then um, some, some more unique benefits and we'll get, um, there's, there's several, several, these are, these are getting more and more unique. So um, 
I thought these were kind of funny, but on, on site workout classes, pet insurance, uh, mechanical bull rides at the bar across the street. But these are ones that people could, you know, people could do, you know, you could implement these really easily in, into your, you know, make it a fun type of fun, fun working environment. Um, fridge stock with snacks, we do that at our office. Um, catered lunches throughout the week. If you live near a ski resort, you could give free passes to a local ski resort. Um, RV rental discounts, I think that's great. The high fives galore, that doesn't cost any money. So that is something that, you know, you could just high five people. I don't know that they would really see the monetary value in that, but uh, bring your dog to work, uh, pet insurance, professional development stipends. We promise not to poke you with a sharp stick was one of, was a good one. Or unlimited usage of the company ping pong table was also um, a pretty solid benefit for, um, for, for a company. So if you have a ping pong table, that was, these were some, some good ones. Now the next ones are really, really creative. And I would think that if you're looking for a career outside of our industry, this might be a good, um, but I thought this was really interesting as far as the, the lengths that some of these tech companies and some of these larger companies are going to, to recruit and retain. It just, this is to further reinforce the, the, the climate that we're in. And these are real. This is from a, um, from a, a European website. But, um, but so Facebook and Apple, Apple both uh, offer female egg freezing for the ladies who want to put off parenthood for a little bit longer. Uh, Miller and Coors has a on-site pub with 13 varieties of beer that their employees can sample. Uh, there's clothing allowances for business wear, some do on-site Botox injections and other medical treatments. Uh, there's a wine bar and DPR construction. Patagonia and, and encourages all of their employees to go um, take long lunch breaks and go surfing. This was a nice one. SC Johnson provides a concierge service for their, um, for their employees that need help with household chores. So like dog walking, cleaning, laundry, all, all that stuff is pretty interesting. Um, JM Family Enterprises does a, allows their employees to use their fleet of yachts. They, uh, Freeborn and Peters, I don't know what company that is, but they pick random staff to go on an annual all expenses paid vacation to Vegas. So that's a, if you've got extra income, that's a solid one. Uh, Zynga has a re relaxation room full of game consoles, both old and new, and arcade machines for their employees. Um, this one was interesting. One best way has a, they build employee trust with Naked Fridays and then uh, a company in Europe, Munich Ray, rewarded their businessmen with um, prostitutes. So that's uh, maybe a benefit that um, maybe probably wouldn't be legal in the United States. But you can see the point to this is that people are going to great lengths to reward and retain and attract employees. So that, that, there's that. Uh, so again, we were talking a little bit about millennials and how it's, it's a, ch a unique challenge in, in itself is, is they're just kind of a different, different animal when it comes to how to maneuver and how to, how to deal with them, how to, how to work with them, how to keep them, how to, how to attract them. Because just like every other, I think, uh, generation, there, the the generation that preceded it was was just completely baffled by by the craziness of of that generation. So millennials are no different. Everybody everybody talks about how how to deal with them, what they're going to do. Uh, Basically, um, millennials want the work-life balance. They want to work. They want a, a challenging work environment that they don't have to work all the time and that they can still have, have, a, have a life. They want a position that they, the biggest piece is that they want a, a personally fulfilling connection and, and they want to feel, feel connected to the company's purpose. So that's a big, a big one. Uh, they, they also want a designated career path, which I think many, many people in, in and out of, depend, regardless of what industry you're in, people want to see where am I starting out and where am I going and, and how am I going to get there. And, and that's 
that's a big thing for millennials. So they want to see where am I starting and, and where do I go and how do I get there and how are you going to help me get there. So that's a, if, if, you, if you got millennials or young people, that's, that's a big piece for how, how to help them work up the employment ladder. Uh, they also want fun and flexibility in their work, so that's that's a challenge again for uh, tree care is always fun, but the flexibility it may not be f as far as time timing and and being having a flexible work hours is is kind of difficult. Um, health insurance is important for them, and retirement funding is is a big big piece. But the biggest one that millennials were concerned with was the cost of tuition reimbursement and student loans. And, continue, and continuing education stipend. So they're, they're really interested in, in, in the continued learning or helping to pay for their already, already learned college experience. So that's, that's what we do with millennials. So this kind of goes along with the, the previous question was, um, you know how much do benefits matter what people really care about when it when it all comes down to it the glassdoor found that you know regardless of benefits regardless of pay regardless of what you're offering the culture and values of the company are are definitely going to make a big difference and and that's going to keep people career opportunities again um, opportunities for advancement um, that's a big one. Uh, people want to know that they're gonna, they can stay with the company and they can move up and that there's, there's a place for them when they do so. And then senior, senior leadership, who's, who's running the company, who's at the helm, and what, what, what kind of company are they running. That, these three things have a, have a maybe bigger effect on how people stay and then, then the benefits that you offer. So that's something to consider also. The benefits are just above and beyond how, you know, what kind of company you're running and what you, what you do as a company. So they're not the leading factors, but, but, it's, but it's important. So just getting back to what we do as a company, um, personally, uh, we do we try to do as much for our employees as we possibly can we do have the employee and family health insurance we offer to our employees and we have an employee contribution that's based on years of service so you know newer employees don't get as much employee contribution but uh, but as you as as you stay on with the company that that contribution moves up uh, we also have employee and family dental insurance so you can cover your, yourself and your family we do offer life insurance, and we have a 401k with a company match, so we match up to 3%. So um, you, can, you can contribute as much as you want to, we will match up to the 3%. We do the boot allowance, we do the uniforms, we provide all PPE and climbing gear for our climbers. Boards, which are all monetary, sometimes gear related. We do production bonuses based on how well the company does, so it's, it's, not, it's not guaranteed, it, but it's, it's based on if we have a great year or if we get all things done or if we have a really great, great week and a really solid production week. Um, that's, that's where those come into play, but they also don't get offered if we don't have that. Company cell phones, company vehicles, we offer to, most everybody has a company cell phone. Company vehicles are more for sales, but we offer those. Um, we also do the, the stocked fridge and snack rooms. We try to, we know this is, it's a really labor intensive job and people are out there working hard and we wanna make sure that their bodies are fueled and that they have healthy food and um, fruit, vegetables, um, in the in the summertime my dad's garden is huge and he brings in all the produce from his garden we have like our own farmers market that they, people can just help themselves to um, we do a training um, training tuition reimbursement so through the tcia if people want to do the the tcia tree care academy books they can do those and um, kind of work through those books and you get a certification through those and we give a reimbursement for those 
We do conference, <laughs> conference attendance. So for various conferences like the ISA conference or uh, winter management or um, I think Midwest ISA is coming up pretty quickly here, so we'll send people to those. We do whatever training's offered through our personal St. Louis Arborist Association. Um, throughout the year, we send people to those. We also give customer service awards for above and beyond customer service. If, if a customer calls up and, or sends in a note uh, that, that specifically outlines good job, well done, we give, we give extra, extra awards for that. And then we also give little, we do little things like that help our employees try to um, get through the day uh, you know, or, or be able to make sure that they're, they're being safe and, 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 and you know, it, in terms of Gatorade in the summertime when it's really hot, making sure that they're staying hydrated and that they are, you know, we do salt tablets and all that kind of stuff to make sure that they're, um, you know, being able to work out in the heat because obviously if they can't work, you know, and it, because it's too hot or they get overheated, they can't work. Same thing with, we just give hand warmers in the, when it's really super cold and, and we try to give those little, those are little things that, that, you know, you could offer to your employees or that you could do that just kind of um, help them out and, and just one little extra thing to maybe, maybe put you above, um, you know, another company. So. It's always things to consider. I'm sure there's lots and lots of other other ones out there. Um, that's something kind of that we that we do, and and we try to try to come up with creative ones. Maybe not as creative as some of these other companies, but um, but you have to be able to do what you can do. And what we always say is that you know the um, in order to have benefits, you have to have productive employees and you have to have that production level so that you can you can have those extra benefits because the benefits cost money to the employer the benefits are can be expensive health insurance workers compensation it's expensive to to do that and to have have those as an employer so you know in in order to do that you have to have the production level for from your employees so it goes hand in hand and it's and it, and it goes together so productive employees equal you know more benefits and and ben, and so it goes hand in hand so it's it's one of those things so happy employees here equal productive employees so um, that is kind of kind of what i have in terms of of the all the benefits that are offered and and kind of what we what we do and and kind of what what's out there in the industry so there's there's lots of different lots of different options there's lots of um, lots of things that you can think about from from an employer standpoint is is what's important to to my employees what is my employee mix and and what do they need and what can I provide is is something to look at so I think in conclusion, you know, the, the, the major takeaways are that, you know, the, the health insurance is a big one. The, the retirement funds are, are, are big, especially if you have people in the mid to late 20s to, to people going into their, you know, 30s and 40s. That's, the retirement funds are gonna be a big piece. Um, the, the, Health insurance, especially for people who have small families, you know, young children, small kids, or have families, those those are going to be important. The the extras and the little things that you can do, those those are going to be on a case by case basis, and and how and how you can maneuver and manage through those. So that's. Um, you know that's that's really all I have. If anybody has any has any other questions on there, I don't. I I think um, I think that's all that I have. But so I appreciate the time and and I appreciate you coming in. So well, I loved it. Um, <laughs> I thought it was super refreshing to have a, a business oriented topic, and I thought that the information you presented tonight um, was really salient and, and uh, definitely hits home. I, I know when I started working. In the tree care industry, I worked for a small organization in Northern Ohio. You know, we had less than six employees. There were no benefits. Um, you know, I was paying taxes and everything, but it didn't start that way. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't think I recognized necessarily what was, you know, I, I saw that extra money coming in, that extra 25%, and I, I was taking it, you know? And uh, 
So I, I can certainly identify with that. Um, you know, we didn't have health benefits here at Tree Stuff uh, until July of 2016. Yeah. Um, it's expensive. It's expensive, and you know, and, and you also don't think that you, the way that I think about it is, if you have cash in your pocket, you know, you're going to spend that, you know, cash, or you, you know, you get that paycheck, you go cash it. You know, if if it's if you're if you have the taxes taken out, you know, you're you're going to have that set aside. So the the cash thing is is, is huge. Um, are you guys hiring right now? Uh, we're always hiring. We're we're always looking for people. We're always taking we always take an application. How do I apply for a job? Uh, well, you can send us your resume to our website. Um, there's places to, to What's apply. What's the website? Uh, www.metro-forestry.com. You can apply on Facebook, our Facebook page, uh, Metropolitan Forestry Services. Um, you can send us an email to anywhere, or you can stop in our office at any time. We're always, always taking applications and always looking for, for people who want, we're looking for a, awesome. a job. Awesome. So. Well, there's, there's a couple good organizations out in the St. Louis area. The Moyer Brothers are from out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, I know them. They're, they're great, well, they're aren't actually, they? They're actually like in, right across the border in Illinois. But you yeah, know, they, yeah, yeah, in yeah, Belleville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but that's uh, really close. So we don't, we don't really even work over that way. So, but yes, sir. If you're talking about profit sharing, how do you define profits? Um, well, that would be a question for somebody. We don't really do that, but um, I think I, I know that it's a it's a convoluted system for somebody like Davy. Um, they have different different levels of it, and um, and. Well, I can speak to how Davy does it. Well, yeah, you'd be better, but, but they do. They're ones that do profit sharing. We don't necessarily do. Davy's profit sharing, profit sharing uh, is mostly stock option plans yeah. or employee stock purchase plans yeah. for their lower tier employees. At the management level, um, like the district managers, the people that run the office, they make the uh, revenue minus the expenses times 1.18. Okay. Um, and uh, whatever that is, uh, they get half of it. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Solid. Well, so there you go. That's that's a that's a great way to do that. The, but that would be for you know, and I don't know that the Bartlett's or any of the bigger companies do that. No, Davy's the only one that does yeah. those big district, yeah. like where the district managers are really invested. Yeah. So that's that's for for companies that do that. For us, ours is more of a um, when we say that we do profit sharing, we don't really do it per se. We do more of a production bonus. So if we get our work done and if we have a great year if we are increased from the year before we'll do you know yeah. we'll give a, a, a bonus based on that but it's you know it's just it depends on the year that you have and and what happens so. my, my recommendation to you if you're a business owner and you're looking to do profit sharing uh, is base it off of top line sales keep it very simple uh, don't base it off of your actual profitability um, yeah. As much as profitability is everyone's responsibility, it's your responsibility as the business owner. Um, and it's much easier if your employees are gold off of a top line sale. So you know, if we sell this much, uh, you'll get either this fixed amount or uh, this percentage. Um, Joe Russell in Columbus has a really interesting system. I'll, I'll just paraphrase it, but uh, each day, each worker is given a man hour rate for themselves individually. Um, they carry the cruise man hour rate for themselves, and then that's weighted into their whole month. So I might work with you one day and have a, a really high man hour rate because you're great. Yeah. Uh, but I go out and you know, work with Joe and he's terrible. Um, so my man hour rate goes down a little bit, but Joe's is always low. Uh, at the end of the week, if your man hour rate individually is not over a certain goal, um, then you don't get your bonus. And if you yeah. do get your bonus, it's I think 10% of your uh, pay, yeah. right? Um, so there's a lot of ways to do production bonuses and profit sharing, but uh, for the question, if you're going to do profit sharing, my personal recommendation, do it off top line sales. Uh, any other questions uh, for Megan, Carson? No? Great. Well, uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, this link to the CEUs will be posted uh, in the comments as well as uh, in a separate post. Sometimes it's hard to click on links from the comments of the live stream. Uh, we can't explain that to you. Um, but it's true. So if you have trouble clicking on it, just go to the main Facebook page and there'll be a post there uh, that says, thanks for watching. Here's the webinar link. Uh, you need a 70% to pass, Jake? 60%? 80%. So you need to get 16 out of 20 correct. Uh, good luck.
And if anybody has any other questions about this or the presentation or wants further information, I mean, my email is on there, so you can send us an email or the presentation and, um, or any other ideas or questions. You can definitely email me, and I'd be glad to shoot you some information. Awesome. So. That's a great resource. So, yeah. uh, Thanks for watching. We do have two more webinars this month. We have uh, Culture of Safety with Travis Vickerson in just a week or two. And then at the end of the month, yet to be announced officially, we're going to travel out to Washington and do a tour of Samson's Rope Factory. Uh, with a mix of live and recorded footage that we'll do when we get out there. Uh, so we should be able to show you a really cool look at how rope goes from being uh, fiber to thread to, you know, full carriers and, and wrapped all the way up. So it's, it's really exciting. I think you guys will love it. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Happy New Year. Yay.